Good day and welcome to Living Well in Montana. This is a program of LIFT, and LIFT stands for Living Independently for Today and Tomorrow. And the nonprofit organizations help people with disabilities in 18 counties throughout Eastern, Central, Southern Montana. So today we have Tanya Thomas, who is our peer coordinator at LIFT, and I will let her introduce today's guest. Thank you, Corby. Today's guest with us is Molly Kimmel. Molly Kimmel is from Montech. And I'm gonna go ahead and let Molly explain. Uh, first, Molly, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to Montech. You bet. Thanks so much for having me today. I'm excited to be able to share about Montech services. I am an occupational therapist myself practicing in Missoula, Montana. And for anyone unfamiliar with OT, we work on anything that occupies your time. That's where the name comes from. So that means that we spend a lot of time with people figuring out how to do the things that they need to do and also the things that we want to do. And so uh, two years ago, the opportunity arose for me to join the Montech team as the program director. And I jumped at the chance because I have been a Montech user for many years. I've brought many, many clients through the doors to experience some of our assistive technology. And so the chance to join as the program director was one I just couldn't pass up. So I started at Montech, which is our statewide assistive technology program in April of 2020, right at the beginning of the pandemic. So it was jumping in with both feet when our (laughs) office was closed and figuring out how to navigate, how do we continue to serve people across the state during this challenging time? And now two years later, it's fun to see how our program is evolving and changing to, to meet the current needs now. That's fantastic. So for viewers, Molly, that don't know, Um, You kind of answered it briefly. What is Montech and what kind of programs and services does Montech provide? Yes. So we are one of 56 assistive technology programs. And these 56 programs, one in every state and every territory, are tasked under the Assistive Technology Act by the federal government with providing access to AT. I'm going to use the acronym AT for assistive technology as as we move on. So what we do, and I'm here in my office, but in the rest of the lab in Montana, we have about 3,000 items that are considered assistive technology or adaptive equipment. And anyone with a disability in Montana, it doesn't matter where you live, where you are, we want you to be able to have access to this equipment. And so we do that through a lending library, essentially, and anyone can request a piece of equipment from our inventory and hold on to it for 30 days, up to a year, depending on the piece of equipment. So that allows people to try before they buy. You know, we have a few things that cost 10 or $15, but we also have things that cost $15,000. So you want to make sure before you shell out that money or have insurance pay for that money that it works for you in your home, in your school, at work, in your community. We just want to make sure that that's available to you and going to improve your life. Molly, I just have a question. We started working with Lyft right about the same time you started working at Montac right when everything closed down because of COVID and the Lyft office had to close. And one of the jobs that we had is how do you reach out to people when an office is closed? Um, Did you uh, rethink what kind of equipment um, people needed for communication? You bet we did. We were lucky enough to part with another program within the Rural Institute, which is where we're housed here on the University of Montana campus. And we actually got a grant for $15,000 that was specific to telehealth equipment. So we use that money in a very broad definition of telehealth, saying we need to make sure that people across Montana have access to internet. So we bought 
mobile hotspots with unlimited data and laptops and iPads and telehealth equipment that people could have in their homes. They could communicate with their providers. But we also used it for a lot of different computer access equipment because we saw, you know, the pandemic allowed people with disabilities to be present in a different way, but we had to make sure they had the equipment needed to do that. So we had a lot of different adaptive mice and keyboards that we purchased with that money so that we could make sure that anybody at home had what they needed to still be in our virtual world. So that was one way that we did it, but it was also about communication. It was about our, our outreach strategies, right? So we, along with our lending library, we do a lot of uh, trainings and public awareness campaigns. And so when we couldn't go out in the community and meet people face-to-face, -face, we started hosting webinars and started sending out materials via snail mail and, and different ways to try to reach as many people as possible. Wow, I love that. I think you guys just, you nailed that. You know, outreach, it's so important to keep people connected. And I think that the one thing that the pandemic did teach us was that we can keep connected. You know, there are ways we don't have to isolate. Um, and I think it's made a lot more people who wouldn't otherwise have been comfortable with the technology, more comfortable with the technology. Exactly. And we, we took that social isolation to heart too. And so we did purchase a lot more smart home technology and ways for people to be on video with each other. We even bought two of the virtual reality headsets because we thought, okay, we have two people <laughs> across the state who want to meet and play a game. Fun. How fun is this? Right? Great opportunity. That's fantastic. I love it. What kind of people can benefit and take advantage of the services that Montech provides? Who do you serve? Everybody. <laughs> we, we do not discriminate. Uh, we really say that we want to reach anyone with a, with a disability, any Montanan with a disability, anyone who's experiencing a change due to aging. And it doesn't have to just be that person. So, you know, as a therapist, I said, I, I use the services quite a bit. So I could borrow items. I could also bring my clients in for a, a consultation or a demonstration with one of our AT specialists. And that's a great chance for people who may not know what they need from our inventory, but they want to explore a variety of different things. And so that used to, of course, be in person in the, either our Missoula or Billings office. We do have a Billings office. But now, of course, we can do that virtually. So that's available to anybody uh, with ease. And we're happy to do that on Zoom, over the phone, over another platform. But back to your question, Tanya. No. Therapists, no. teachers, parents, kids who are getting things for their parents. And we've had neighbors come in who say, oh. I would like to get something for my neighbor who I can tell is having trouble with their vision. What do you have? So it's really open to anybody. And, and we really want to just be a, a model for accessibility and an inclusion in whatever we, way we can. So even if we don't have what this person is looking for, we want to be a resource and want to be able to recommend other community organizations who might be able to help. So I can't tell you how many times we send it back to centers for independent living to, to help us out on some of these cases. And we're absolutely I would glad. imagine um, there are a lot of people that don't know what technology is available. So it isn't just like, oh, I need this adaptive, et cetera, et cetera, but I'm having trouble with this. Is there something that could help me? You got it. Exactly. And that's why we tend to use both terms, assistive technology and adaptive equipment, because when some people hear technology, they say, nope, not for me. <laughs> so we want to we want to make sure, again, to, to be as inclusive as possible. But, yeah, we'll have folks come in and say, I was just diagnosed with Parkinson's. I am having a hard time eating. What have you got? And we have six different things that we can show them. And it may not be things they need right now, but two years down the line, 
this could come back into play and they could try it again. And that might be the key to being able to, you know, go to a restaurant and feel comfortable eating your soup, which, which may not be an option right now. You know, it's a simple solution is, is what we're really trying to go, go for here. And we try to have, because we don't sell anything, we try to have multiple versions to meet the same problem so that people can try options and say, this is the one for me. This is the, this is the pro of this type of device. You know, I'm thinking about these noise canceling earbuds that we have. We have a pair that's $35 and we have a pair that's $300 and they each have their own pros and cons. But for somebody to be able to try both of those at home for 30 days to make sure they work for them is, is such a benefit. I love it. I think that's, it's fantastic. Uh, this is my favorite part. Um, <laughs> I love gadgets and tech. Did you have any tech to show us tonight? Oh, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> my office doesn't <laughs> usually have a walking bike in it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Tech ranges. So we have very simple, low tech solutions. And a lot of what I have back here behind me are kind of mid tech, I would say. But because we serve people across the lifespan and with every disability, we have something for everyone. So I picked and, and chose a couple different things to try and show you. And I'm going to bring them back to the front uh, here to see if we can get them on camera. This first one over Molly. here. Yeah. yeah, Molly, that's so interesting because when you said all ages, I just realized that a very young person is going to need a different kind of technology than an adult. You got it. Absolutely. So we have a lot of different communication items and also things for learning and reading and writing and dyslexia and things that happen with school age kids. But just for example, you know, we have these fun toys and some kids might not be able to interact with toys in a traditional way. So we, we can make anything switch adapted. And we have about 25 different kinds of switches for kids who might need to learn cause and effect when playing with toys or who may not have the dexterity to play in the traditional way. So here, I don't know if I can do it with, there we go. I'm hitting that switch. And that's what's turning on this toy. And then when I remove my hand, it stops. So it creates that fun uh, cause and effect play. And they recognize it's a great precursor to communication where somebody might have to use a device to type out their words. So they learn that when I hit a button or push something, something happens. So yeah, this is one that we have for the younger folks and for us who just like fun in the office. <laughs> I'm an OT, so I have to showcase anything related to the kitchen, right? So any idea what this is for? <laughs> it might be hard to see. <laughs> like a... Almost, I don't know. I can't see it very well, but it reminds me of something you'd use to like hold a cookbook or some sort of helping to hold something nope. in the kitchen. Yep, you got it, Tanya. Helping to hold so it's a one handed workstation. Oh. So it has these little spikes over here. You can put an apple or a tomato or a cucumber on those spikes and then use a knife to cut it one handed. Right here, you can put your jar of peanut butter right there, clamp it down, and open the jar. Over here, we have a grater that's stationary, so you don't need two hands to grate, and then a nice little vegetable brush right here. So that's a great example for kitchen, meal prep, cooking, anything like that. And on our YouTube channel, we put together a adaptive cooking in the Montec kitchen show with my coworker with Sam who happens to be a chef here in, in Missoula when he's not working for us. So that's really fun to be able to highlight those pieces. 
And yeah. that's the kind of thing that people wouldn't even know exist. Exactly. Yeah. Anyone in Missoula, I know I'm, I'm, I'm in the Billings audience, but when you come west, come visit us. We'd be happy to take anybody on a tour of the lab. And it just opens your eyes to the kinds of things that are available. I, and that's what, like Corby said, that's what's so wonderful about this is things that probably Corby and I, <laughs> I wouldn't have thought about that. That's not something, and I live with a disability, but because disability is, is because there's such a wide range of what disability means to different people, there's things that I would never even dream of, but things that are so wonderful that make life easier for everyone. I just, I do. I love it. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, that's exactly it, Tanya. And it, it's things, I mean, I had no idea something like this, which is just simple earphones, right? You think, oh, those are noise canceling earphones, right? No, these will Bluetooth connect to your television. So your partner who likes to listen to the TV at volume 100, well, you listen to the TV at volume 12. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> this, the one who likes it loud can have it in their own space, which is really nice. So we're not just serving people with disability, but it's, it's the people who live with them and who are uh, in their communities too. That's wonderful. I love it. Things I would never think about again. Uh, um, how, how would a person get access? How, what's the process of going about um, using your services? Yeah, we try to make it as easy as possible. So anybody can call. We, we are here Monday through Friday, eight to five, and we'll answer any phone call. And uh, I'm happy to, to provide that. Uh, as needed, if we were at 243-5511 is an easy one to, to reach us. But our website is pretty intuitive, I would say. And our website is at mt-at.org. And when you go on there, you can scroll through our entire inventory. You can search by category. So if you said, I just want to look at the vision stuff. You click on vision and you have pages to go through and you say, oh my gosh, I want these binoculars that sit on my face that I don't have to use my hands for. These are, I really want to try these. All you have to do is create an account. And if that uh, is not an option for you, you can call us and we'll create that for you. But we don't ask for a lot of things. We want your name, a couple ways to contact you and the reason that you're requesting this device. And then we're willing, as long as you're outside of 20 miles away from Missoula, we will ship it to you. So you will get a box with the item in it and a return shipping label for when you're done with it and you can just put it in the mail and return it to us. So we don't want access to be a barrier and we are continually looking at ways to improve how we can more, how we can better serve people across the state. So if somebody finds something that they've used and they like it, what's the next step for them? Say if it's, it's a more expensive piece of equipment and they maybe can't afford that on their own, what would they do? Absolutely. Yeah. So that is, you know, I've talked about loans. I've talked about demonstrations. I've talked about our trainings. But we also want to make sure that we're providing some financial assistance in whatever way we can. Unfortunately, that means we can't buy everybody everything. We would love to be able to do that. But we can point people in the direction of local, statewide, and national grants for specific equipment. We also host a, a financial loan program. And we partner with Rural Dynamics out of Great Falls, which is a statewide financial wellness program. And anyone can apply online for a financial loan for assistive technology. And anything up to $1,500 is 0% interest on that loan. Up to $50,000 is only 3.5% interest right now. So we get a lot of people who are trying to fund hearing aids and wheelchair accessible vans, two things that are 
not covered by insurance in any way. So they can apply for that financial loan. And because we're a nonprofit, our, our group that reviews those applications has a better understanding of disability and assistive technology so that we can um, be as accepting as we can on those. So Molly, I have a question. Um, Montac then serves anybody with disabilities in terms of adaptive equipment. Is it tied to Medicaid in any way? Or are there restrictions about income? Not at all. So as, the, as part of the Assistive Technology Act, we are completely federally funded to operate this program and there is no restriction on income. There is no information that we get related to that. If you wanna borrow our stuff, please do. Great. I love that it's so easily accessible, especially, I think the fun part is going to be for people that they, they don't even know what they might need or they find out what, you know, oh, I could really benefit from this. And I, it opens up a whole new world. Um, I could use anybody. that kitchen equipment and I had two perfectly good. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> yeah, and it's nice that some of this equipment is becoming more commercially available and accepted that you can go into, you know, some box stores and see something similar to that to get it doesn't have to be high end from a medical equipment company hard to obtain. I, I really appreciate that we're seeing more items more commercially available. Oh, absolutely. Do you have a success story? Can you share with us maybe a story about someone who you really, really affected, benefited do you have something like that for us? I mean, I have one every day I'm because sure. our staff is amazing and, and the work that they do is so inspiring. And it's such a, such a fun place to work. We get to see success stories all the time. Uh, but I was thinking particularly about two women who came in in the same week and they both had declining vision and weren't sure what was available to them, but they came in because they weren't able to participate in crafting anymore. And one of them was uh, really spent a lot of her time making homemade cards. And so we showed them some handheld magnifiers, some bigger magnifiers, you know, we have this range. And I think they both ended up just taking a very bright light with the magnifier built in. And they uh, both wrote us cards saying how much that meant to them. But because I think we told one about the other, they actually asked for to exchange contact information. So not only <laughs> did we see success, they ended up purchasing this equipment. They, I have a, a card on my desk back here that one of the women made to say thank you for the services that she got here. But we also created a, a social opportunity. They only lived 20 miles away. So it was just a full circle success and, and makes me happy to think about every time. What have you seen? Um, I know every day would be exciting there and, and learning about all this equipment and all this technology would be great. Have you seen anything significant, anything as far as innovation and progress that's really excited you in this past few years? All the time. You, you nailed it. I mean, we're, we meet once a month to talk about all of the new things we want to buy. And while well, some things are more commercially available, some things are getting way more expensive. So that's a whole different story. I think one of the areas that's been fun to watch has been smart home technology, because it used to be that somebody with paralysis who could not access their environment would have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to be able to use a specific piece of equipment to turn on their lights and adjust the thermostat and raise the blinds. And now you can do that with easily available and affordable technology. And even this summer, there's a new product coming out that is going to merge all of the smart home 
platforms. So you can have your Amazon and your Google talking and being in the same space instead of being separate, which is really exciting. I, I can't wait to play with that when that comes out. To, so to see, you know, going from t- spending tens of thousands of dollars to control your environment and to have that independence to control your environment to now being able to spend a hundred dollars on a piece of equipment that can do a lot of that. That's really exciting. It's true. I, it's absolutely true. Um, when things are, you know, more affordable, affordability changes the game completely. Um, what's on the horizon? What do you see on the horizon for Montec? Don't get me started. Uh, <laughs> oh, go for it. <laughs> Well, I'm really, really pleased to announce that we actually just found out yesterday that we were the recipient of $100,000 from the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation, specifically to partner with Fish, Wildlife and Parks to install five accessible kayak and canoe launches across the state. Yeah, so that's going to be really fun. It's a two-year project. It's going to take us a while to find the right spaces and make sure that we're serving as many people as possible. But I'm really excited to to expand beyond as much as we can Missoula and Billings, right? Make sure that we have things in other spaces. So that's fun. And and in that same realm, we received a, a smaller grant from Bass Pro Shops to update our adaptive rec inventory. And so we have been spending money on a foldable, like origami lightweight kayak that we can ship to anyone in the state. We we bought a three-wheeled bicycle, which we have bikes in five different communities. So if you're unfamiliar, the Y in Billings does have three-wheeled bikes and I believe a tandem bike available for loan. Oh, okay. So they're in town. Yep. And those are 30 day loans as well. We bought some camping equipment and hiking equipment and updated some of our hunting equipment and fishing. So we are going to have a field day as a staff in a couple of weeks to take pictures and try everything out <laughs> and then be able to promote it uh, this summer. So that's going to be really fun. We, we are about out of time. I guess the last question would be, um, how can people contact you or contact the lift office? Yes, absolutely. So as I said, our website is pretty easy, mt-at.org. And our phone number is 243-5511. If you're in Missoula, stop on by. We're on the University of Montana campus in the basement of McGill Hall. And uh, we would love to see any of you reach out. No, no question is too big or too small for us to try and tackle. And Tanya, how about for Lyft? So for Lyft, ours is pretty easy too. Our email address um, can be, uh, our, e- our website, I'm sorry. Our website can be found at www.liftt.org. Our main office number here in Billings is 406 406- Two five nine five one eight one. I should have the Glendive number memorized. I do not, but if you call here and you're in the Glendive service area, I'll get you their number too. Okay. Well, thank you both for a really entertaining and engaging and important topic. Thank you so much, Corby, Corby and Tanya. I really appreciate it. It's been a blast. Thank you, Molly. Thank you all.